happening, lads? All right, lad. Gotta go and see our kid in the Aussie. Then to Nicker, mate. I've only got buttons, lad. I need new clobber, lads. This is a short documentary focusing on the wonderful Scouts accent. The Scouts accent is famous worldwide and is iconic to the city of Liverpool. But where did this dialect come from? Today we will find out and also hear from members of the public with their views and thoughts. I'm Jackie Downey and I'm proud to say I am a genuine Scouser, even though I've lived away from the town a long time. People have very funny definitions, I think, of what it is to be a Scouser and because I've lived away so long, I'm sick of defending the city and going against what people's preconceptions of a Scouser is. You know, like the old days in the 80s when Harry Enfield did the Scouser sketch, the shell suits, the perms, calm down, calm down. This is the life, eh? Hey! Hey! Do you want to fight or something? Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Originally, Liverpool is started off as an amazing worldwide seaport didn't it and it attracted all kinds of different nationalities all over the world and from what I've gathered even the word Scouser it comes from when there was a huge influx of Norwegian shipping into the port in the 18th and 19th centuries and the poor sailors used to make this sort of lobster or seafood stew called Scouser or something like that or Skios. And then that, it came from that originally, even the word Scouser comes from a Norwegian stew made by Scandinavian sailors. It is a known fact that the Scouse accent is highly influenced by Irish and Scandinavian immigration into the ports. But it's not just Scousers who can talk the lingo, people from around Britain can easily speak the accent. What's happening lads? What's happening lads? I had a maid with me fella last night, so we got bin bagged. I need new clobber, lads. It's quite interesting, I think, that one time in my life, when I was about 11, I'm an only child, and my great-grandfather came to live with us. But I was also living with my grandparents and my mum and dad. So there were four generations of Scousers yeah. in the house. And even as a child, I could hear the differences. Like my grandparents, my grandfather, was a real Irish Scouser, but he was from the Scotland Road area and he was a singer and a comedian. And his dialect, and I've researched this as well because I'm interested in the Scouse dialect, it was more a mixture of Lancashire and Irish than it is now. And it's changed, it's changed dramatically, I think. And when we got into the 60s with all the free thinking and the drugs and everything, and young people got more of a voice and I think they got more sort of aggressive as well and now I think it's changed even further where a lot of like young people like your age and younger have sort of got this slight aggressive tone I think to their voice sometimes and a lot of the girl you know the forces all been there into the news like Hi hello what are you doing with Savvy Gale? Just get on the office to get a baby. I'm gonna go to the bed in a minute and go get the I think it quite clearly changes in different parts of the city and yeah I mean you can split the city generally into two two halves, you've got the north and south, and their accents are distinctly different in, in my understanding. Yeah, if you look at the north end of Liverpool you've got like kind of very hard consonants um, and vowels. Whereas if you go to the south end of the city. Uh, the vowels are much rounder, and the same is also true if you go to the other side of the river, a lot rounder vowels. And then within that, I suppose, you can probably see minor changes. Like if you go to the north end of the city, they probably speak a slightly different way in Kirkdale than they do in Vizakli. And this is not unique to Liverpool, this is, happens all over in every city. But the, the Scouse accent is particularly fragmented in that way. The Scouse accent is thought to be very hard to understand with the thick, fast dialect. This is mainly the younger generation, the like this young lad, for example. With the team, you have to win? Were you getting a bit frustrated in the first half because you seem to have only scraps to feed on? No, probably more with um, a lot of things, really. Um, I don't really want to say, but some, some, some people are not um, you know, doing the job right. Did you let your feelings be known? Yeah, of course. You know, it's, um, everyone gets frustrated now and again, but you know, um, got the booking and then learned from it. And, um, went on and, you know, managed to help us win the game, which I'm delighted with. 
Swear the Papa Lati, Tofa Lati. Swear the Papa Lati, Tofa Lati. Swear the Papa Lati, Tofa Lati. But also, Scousers are known for their great sense of humor and the dialect, like this young man. One minute I'm Brucey, next minute I'm on my ass. Always throw for the chicken burger from the Mac. He's doing it. As we are coming to an end, I have learned a lot more about the accent what I never knew before. But one thing that makes me wonder is, what will it be like in the future? In 20 years time, the dialect could well change again because with phonetics and when you'd study voice, it takes one or two generations apparently for a dialect to change if a new influx of people come into the city. So maybe that could happen. I think, in my opinion, I think the language is going to become more homogenous. It's going to become um, less distinct. Uh, because I think with the, with the influence of media, especially global media, accents, I think right across this country, especially, I'm not an expert on it, like I say, but across this country, I think they're changing. Everything's just becoming a little bit more the same-ish. We've still got our varieties within the regions and stuff like that, but everything's just becoming a little bit more homogenised. Yeah, right, I'm off, kid, in a bit. Peace.